The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the Monday edition, Monday the, uh, what is this, the 8th of July. And this will be the first full week of July coming up. We'll look at the uh, different uh, indices, but let me just show you something quickly. The dollar is just bumping up against There's a technique in the Chapman Wave methodology that I call the inside track repellent or the inside track support or propellant level. And it means that you see in this dollar chart, look at this, I'm going to squeeze it a little bit so you can see it clearly on the left side. Yeah, this is, in fact, the daily chart. You see this uh, light green, thick light green trend line. See the little mini up channel right there with the dashed pink line? Uh, that is saying that every time the price of the dollar went into this area, there was a re uh, repellent and uh, the magnet was turned around so it became a repellent instead of a, a, a instead of pulling it in sucking it in towards that it does it and then it repels the price well we've just seen the same thing happen to the upside in the downtrend and on friday it spiked up above it didn't close above the the dashed green line but it held today it's held the dashed pink red line or a pink line, and that's a support level. So it's testing, it's breaking out as we speak. Let me open this up a little bit more now so you can see a closer look. We're just above that resistance level in a leg C in the Chapman Wave. And what does the Chapman Wave always ask for? Very simply put, we identify the lowest low bar and merely count each successively higher peak, label them alphabetically, on uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down, but it's really the way up that counts the most because when it gets to the fourth highest peak, we label it A, B, C, peak D. That's where other things can happen. I always talk about patterns. There's just a straight line up or down. That's one. There's either a cup or an arch. So it's straight line up or down, cup or arch, or a combination. So it's just the three patterns, straight up, straight down, arch cup well what do we have in this particular instance we have cup formations with lower highs and now we've got a um, arch formation and we're testing the previous high an arch formation sorry that goes to a cup formation the 9744 level was challenging the 9777 level from the 18th of june now we've broken out of that resistance. The MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, is strong. Stochastic is at 50%. It's rounding, but it's not great. It needs to be over 80%. So that is a positive. But wait a minute. The weekly chart, oops, the weekly chart right here of the dollar. Remember, this is the dollar index trading right now at 97.36, up 8 pips. Uh, you've got a new leg A in the weekly chart. So you've gone from a cup formation to an arch formation. Now you're making an even narrower, shorter term cup formation. But we would need, really need to see an extension this week above last week's high of 97.44 to continue leg A, gray leg A to the upside. Why do I say gray? Because it's way under the previous high. You need to confirm with the MACD and stochastic giving good buy signals to buy modes. And right now, they haven't even given buy signals. It's just a good uh, bounce. Now look at the monthly chart. The monthly chart is really good. Of course, this is just the second week, uh, second bar of the weekly chart of the month of the, uh, in the dollar. This is the first month of July, and it's made a higher low, and it's held the 14-period moving average. The black line is holding the green moving average, which has support at... <clears throat> 96.62, and it's trading at 97.36 right now. Magni is good, not great, but good. Stochastic is very good at 86, but it has pulled back a little bit. So the dollar is indicating that it wants to try for the 97.70s 
preferably the 98s quite soon. If you look at the euro currency pair, EURUSD, this is the, in, the, the inverted pattern, you've got this cup formation now, very weak, it's trading at 1.120, down 0.01, and there's that almost like an Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down, it did it once before, it's done a number of times actually, um, and failed. So the euro is not looking too well, and the USD JPY, which is the, uh, the yen, the dollar yen currency pair, is looking much, much better. The weekly chart needs a lot of work, but the daddies and legs see very nice with the MACD up, suggesting at 66, about the same as the dollar. Um, so, so far, that's acting quite nicely. So, gold. Gold is trading down 3.4, had a rally that failed. It's made a high. Um, at 1442.9 on the 25th of May, and it's been in a rectangle formation. There could be one more push toward the 1440 level, but I suspect that at some point in the, in the next couple of weeks, it will break below 1380. And that's going to be a key moment. But in the meantime, the weekly chart is still holding very well, and so is the monthly chart. All right, enough with that. Let's just get to the numbers here. INDU, this is the Dow. Trading down 142. Um, it is under the Chapman Wave inside track repellent support line. So that's not so good. And the monthly chart, the weekly chart shows that this whole area has a lot of resistance. And the monthly chart saying all of them show that we're bumping into, we're getting into a strong resistance area. Unless the Dow in July closes above 27,000, oh, I'd say 27,350 would be fantastic action. But up until 27,000, 27,100, I think there's a lot of resistance. Um, we're looking at that. We're looking at the SM. So key support, 26, if the Dow closes below 26,600, especially without making a leg D to the upside, huh, that'll be very interesting and suggest that we are in a timeout when it can, could go a little while longer. If there's a rally, I'm not expecting the rally's going to be able to clear this, there it is, this trend line, and it says 26, yeah, 26,990s <coughs> has a lot of, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of resistance to 27,090. QQQ. Three Qs. There goes the voice again. Oops, let me get them. Ah. <clears throat> so the NDX one, <clears throat> the NDX 100 trading vehicle <clears throat> ETF is a QQQ Investco Trust Series, and they made a high, not an all-time high, the all-time, uh, so dead. It made an all-time high of 191.44, which is just 194.4, 12 cents above the 191.32 resistance from April. <clears throat> leg D, leg e, peak E in the daily, leg E in the in the weekly, and only a leg B in the monthly chart. So that's very positive. <clears throat> There's no other count. It has to be a B, and that's suggesting that we're in a buy mode in the monthly chart. That no matter what happens, unless we take out, oh, I'd say 150 to 145 support, and it's trading at 189 right now. Um, this, this is going to go to higher highs in uh, 2019. I'll be right back. Dow's down 148, uh, 6 S&P's down 17. Dow's a chaplain. Tiger Edition's hour. I'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $197 a month with the risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, folks, we're back. <clears throat> so we got the QQQs down at $1.81. <clears throat> and uh, the key support level will be, I would put it right now on a shorter term basis, 188, uh, let's see, the low today is 188.93. I'd put a little bit lower down somewhere in the low, just below the gap, a low of 188.38. That was the gap high of uh, the 1st of July, because the day before it closed at 186.74. So just a little bit below that, let's call it 188.30 area, should be the worst case basis for the next couple of days at least. And the IWM, which is the Russell 2000, ugly candle today, down $1.41 at 155 27 has 154.90 to 154.37 is really important uh, support to hold. Okay, so there are a couple of things. Crude oil here is really showing um, a little bit of strength. It's within that rectangle. Actually, I put it up there. Now I'm going to change it. I'm going to make it right here and say that this is where we're looking at this pattern everywhere. Look, you've got a doji candle right there with the high in crude oil on the first at 59, no, 60.28. And you've got a low over the last uh, few days in the 56 area, call it 56.04, but I'm going to say 56. So I'm anticipating, I'm going to lower this, and I'm saying just for the shorter term, we've got a trading band between 55.80 and I would put it at 58.90. This is over the next few days. If it takes that out on the upside and goes above 59, there's a good chance it's going to go to a leg D above 60.28. And at the same time, if it does that, there's a good chance that Dow's going to go to that leg D or very close as we get. I was asked if I talk about... Um, which have made peaks C1, C2. Uh, all right, I'll do that. So in the term wave methodology, there's a pattern that we look at that suggests that if you go higher and you can get to that third highest peak, peak C, and then pull back a little bit and then go back, but don't make leg D. What you do is you go just fractionally under. So the high in the now is 26,966, round number high. Actually, very unusual to have a round number, all-time high. And then pull back and then rally back again. 
it would be somewhere around here, maybe 26,009. It's got to be close, 50 or 60, and then pull back. And that makes a peak B and a peak C. And then I call this a C2 because everything about it says the MACD was still strong, stochastic was trying to bounce off the uh, instead of turning negative. And the 120-minute chart usually gives you a little, a little ictus, a little sign to say that it wanted to bounce, has made a peak D. And then you can give, have justification to call that a peak C1 and a peak C2, like a phantom peak D top. Then you've got to be prepared for a pullback. I've been prepared already for a pullback. Why we took some gains? Because everything about, look, you see this move up here in the Dow, 26,907.37 on the 21st of June pulls back quite sharply to the green line, that's the line period moving average, and then rallies, and then just fails. It gets to 26,009, what was that? 26,890. So you've got 890 against 907. You got 17 points. 18 points would have made it uh, a leg C. So this here, in many ways, looks like it could be a phantom C. And I don't want to make this complicated, but those of you who are used to the Chapman methodology, I know will transition really easy into what I'm saying. So that makes this a D. So everything, but why do I say it makes it a D? Well, look at this. Uh, the SPY, the S&P, whoops, the S&P 500 ETF, the SPY has gone to a D. The QQQ has gone to an E. The IWM has already gone to a peak E and pulled back quite sharply. So the missing link is the, is the Dow. So I, I'm, I'm able to say because of all the other accoutrements, all the other peaks that have been in place like they should be, the Dow was missing one, but there is enough evidence to say, hey, that's the reason why we took uh, some profit on Friday at the open, because I was saying, I believe we are really close to some kind of um, a pullback. And everything here says, you don't really have to go above this, uh, call it a phantom peak D, because everything says that you kind of made it look, but the MACD hasn't crossed negative and the stochastic's still at 91%. And that leads me to believe there's going to be some news event, it could be Boeing, it could be anything, that just allows it for another, I call it a, a rogue wave, phantom peak, or at least even a, a, an attempt to make a new, new recovery all-time high. Why? Because the MACD is still good. Stochastic's still 91%. That's very strong. There's still enough strength to be able to do that. My biggest thing is to say to uh, subscribers, if the Dow closes above 27,000, 190s, but really, it has to be something like 27,270s, preferably 27,300. That weekly chart is going to get so strong, it's not going to be an alternate count here to say, hey, this is a peak D we could be pulling back. It's going to be a sign to say there is a lot of strength and it's really improving the monthly chart. So here we are on the cusp of either being very positive or being somewhat negative. So I, I've said yellow light out. We're just a bit cautious. We're not going to add any positions right now. Not even short. I just want to see how this plays out. Got it. Okay. Next thing I want to look at is I had a question about, yeah, I'll do that. So my Dow Quartet, Caterpillar. Caterpillar is holding. It made a peak C. That's the other thing. There are so many stocks that have made peak Cs, important stocks, that I, I'm, I'm missing that leg D. I think it's going to be here. And it's, it's not a big deal. It's just saying that I need it to complete the waveform. So Caterpillar holding very nicely, but the monthly chart says, wow, is there a lot of work to get back to the all-time high in the 170s, trading at 135? Look at IBM. You know, I don't know. I'm beginning to think IBM should just be scrapped completely from my Dow Quartet, just like GE was. It's really going nowhere. Peak E pulls back down 94 cents, 140.44. Hasn't even made the leg D yet in the weekly chart. Eh, I don't like the IBM. Triple M, um, this is at a leg C, a peak C, but it's a horrible pattern in the daily and the weekly and the monthly. So it needs so much. It's very bullish looking out if Triple M is going to participate again. It was a leader right up until 2008, uh, January of 2018 when it hit 259. Right there, in the 250s, 
January of 2018, and then it plummets down to 160. That is not good. 100 points, gosh. And then UTX. Uh, uh, UTX is going to be amalgamating with, uh, there we are, with uh, Raytheon. And UTX is holding very nicely. Its, it's monthly chart has really improved a lot. So it's trading at 131.14, minus 140. It just is in a digestive phase. Speaking to someone the other day, um, I don't want to mention names or anything like that. This person was a senior person in one of these really big companies. They got taken over. Uh, I'll give you a clue because we're looking at, um, uh, you know, a lot of stocks here that are uh, either merging or getting taken over. Um, and he was in the taken over firm. And the reason why they were taken over is because they were doing so well. Thousand employees, um, absolutely good, top line. They've been earnings have been great. Everything was in line. So they get taken out by this big, big conglomerate. He said, "We don't know what's going on." Nothing. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi. So I, 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 basically what I'm saying to you is that the uh, acquirer uh, is this huge conglomerate, and they are so cumbersome, they don't even understand the language. They, you have to wonder why they take over these smaller companies. And uh, this person who was a senior person out of the eight or nine uh, um, companies they have in, in different countries, um, in the really the, the nitty gritty, this is in the accounting uh, and procurement area, uh, said, I, I just, I, I get these 40 emails a day, just completely overlooking what I've asked them to, to do or to look at. 
and uh, by the end of the day, we've done nothing. It's just a waste of time and waste of money. And uh, I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do anymore because what they're suggesting isn't what worked for us before. And we're the company that they took over because we were doing so well in what we were doing so well. Why did they even want us? Why are they messing around? So it's happened so often. And I have another story where I know someone in, um, in Australia whose company were a very small little company. They had this paint. It was really uh, stonework. They, they had a, a, some, kind of a, some kind of a cover for stonework, a, a liquid. I'm not, I'm not sure quite what it was. But an American firm just loved it. And, and the, the, one of the people there had started the, the whole American uh, sales and had done really well. So they got acquired by an American company. And then he said, I don't know why they even took us over. We had this, like a blink of an eye in their, one of their divisions. And it's not like they wanted, we were a competition to them. They wanted us because it was a growth company. And for the year that uh, I, I was working and, op and opening sales offices around the country, um, it was really successful. That's why they wanted us. They haven't a clue. Well, it got taken over a second time by another company. So now the little eye blink became a little mini eye blink. And he got even more frustrated because he now didn't know who his boss was and the bosses didn't know who the boss was. Nobody knew anything. And then it was taken over a third time. This is all in the space of a few years. And uh, finally, that person just said, I, I'm done. I, I'm out of here. I, can't, I don't even know what to do. I'm just going to get uh, what's owed to me, and I'm out of here. Um, and, and that happens so often with big companies taking over small companies. They love I mean, IBM. The reason, you know, IBM is one of those examples. IBM took, uh, what, what, what was it again? Uh, Red Hat. Red Hat. It must have been Red Hat. I think Red Hat. They bought Red Hat billions, billions of dollars, and they are still lagging so badly in the cloud area. You know? Yeah. All right. Well, enough for that. So let's just look at, I'm saying UTX here is, um, had a fantastic bounce when the, the news was, I can't remember who it was, they're taking over. The next thing, UTX is, oh, UTX is, with Raytheon. So they had the big balance. Raytheon had the balance, and then both of them came tumbling down. Let's see what Raytheon's doing. R-T-H, R-T-N. R-T-N. Yeah, and then both of them, uh, Raytheon soared from the 180s to 193.99, and then it plunged now, so in the 170s. Uh, I can't just have to wonder. Well, this is one of two good companies. I would think that, uh, actually, I did speak to someone from Raytheon over the weekend who said that they're kind of excited. They think that it's going to work out quite well. It's a, it's a different set of circumstances because Raytheon has so much um, high technology, especially in the military area, and Raytheon needs that. And they also do so they kind of do understand a lot of things. So maybe that one's going to be a little bit different. Okay, enough with that. Next thing is... Um, uh, someone asked me, is there any thoughts on the Silicon Valley bubble? So let's just do this. I don't know about Silicon Valley. Let's just look at the SMH. It's just as an example of not a bubble, <laughs> but on a move up that was the precursor to the move up was it was so oversold when it went into the December low of 80, having hit 120.71 uh, in late 2018. And then it had a spectacular rally. Sorry, 114.55 was the high of March of 2018. Plunges down to 80. That's a 35-point decline. I would say that's a pretty big decline. Uh, and then it has a spectacular 40, 50% uh, rally, 40-point 40, 40 rally, 50%. I mean, that, <laughs> that's amazing. And then it pulls back sharply to the, the, the mid-90s, and now it's trading at 110 having just the other day hit 115, almost 160. So this is saying, and then book to build, everything I've been trying to find out about it says that the orders are not really of the standard that you would expect all-time highs, especially after making yearly lows, just spectacularly in a few months go to an all-time high with a 50% gain. 
that got away from itself. And yet the price is holding very well. So I try to put the two things together. And what it's saying is that these four small, small candles, since the high that was made at 115.96 on the 1st of July, to me, this is just saying that, yes, it did get away, but maybe billing is starting to come back. You cannot ignore the fact that this kind of price move with this kind of pullback from 120 to 98 and then bouncing all the way back to the 115s, trading out 110. This is still pretty good action. And I said to subscribers, we were short all the way down, but I, I did not switch to the long side. And now I have to make a decision because if it holds nicely today, that's going to suggest that maybe there'll be a little bit more of a rally before we have a deeper pullback. And therefore, I don't know if I want to go short to the SMHs. I just, I might have to be thinking of going long. It depends where and how, for how long. So the question is Silicon Valley. If I go to the XLK, I don't see a Silicon Valley bubble. I see exuberance. I see over exuberance. Bubble, I just don't see people talking about it. I don't see, remember with Juniper and all those, uh, you know, the whole thing of 2000, 1990, 1999 and, and 2000. I don't see that going on right now. Even the, the, the new sexy stocks, what's Zoom in the technology area? Uh, Zoom Video Communications had a fabulous move since the IPO in the 60 area, runs all the way to the 107 area, 107.34, trading now at 90 after a pullback into the 86s, uh, 84s. This is pretty good. I don't, I don't see. No, I don't see. I don't see that. Um, and Salesforce, CRM, big digestive phase. It just needs it. It's, this is the equivalent of the when last year in the summer, exactly this time, I was talking about how I anticipated that the FANG stocks, F-A-A-N-G, were about to have some kind of a hat-trick top in the monthlies, which, which would be a timeout for quite a few months. I think that the, the sales forces and the cloud area, same, same thing. And that's why we're looking at a potential rotation here. And that's why for subscribers to my opening call, we are very selective. We've got areas that seem to be a little under the radar rather than under the weather. And that's that's really important to me. A question about the XLF. Yeah, the XLF is a laggard. I don't think you have to look at the financials as part of the interest rate infrastructure. I would rather look at it as part of the economic infrastructure and that they've done things, they've done good things to have the, to have the Fed say they get check marks, positive marks for balance sheets and everything that they had to do. I'll be right back. Dow's down 136. Be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Education's Hour. Love to hear from you. 877-927-6648. See you in a moment. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for a 
its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your gold report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So we're talking about Salesforce, and it made its all-time high right here. In May, at 167.56, it had a subsidiary high of March of 166.99. And uh, here is what I wanted to show you, a question I had about Salesforce. No, it's not that. It is this. Is that this? No, it's that. It's this. There you go. So here's the building. And I have this thing about, uh, now it's, of course, common knowledge, but I used to think that I had an original concept back in 1980s, 1990s, that skyscrapers uh, were announced, and that was invariably the market top of that country, that, that city, that area. And it's happened so often. Petronas Towers back in the 1990s. I mean, you could just go on and on and on. Uh, Burj Dubai had to change its name to the Burj Khalifa, um, Khalifa, yeah, Khalifa. And uh, because the week that it was supposed to open, there was a, a market crash. And they actually had to switch funding. They switched the names and everything. Uh, that It just happens. And 1929, of course, the Empire State Building. You can just go on and on. So I was saying when I read about the Salesforce um, new tower in San Francisco, I thought, uh-oh, let's watch this. Well, this kept going for quite a while, right into May. Uh, and this was open in January. Yeah, look at this huge building. And look, look, look at it. Uh, I'm trying to put it in, there. I'll put it in context. Uh, and this is the best way to see it, I think. I've not seen it in real life. Here's the Golden Gate Bridge. Here are the other tall buildings. And there it is, right there. Look at that. But here's the chart. The chart is saying, yeah, we might have a digestive phase, but uh, the cloud computing is absolutely the way to go. It's the most important area, has been for a long time. So now there's a big digestive phase because so many um, companies are wanting to get in. And Salesforce is probably one of the leaders. And it made a high of 166, did I say 167, 67.56. And uh, that was in April. So now it's pulling back a little bit. It's at 152, no big deal. It could even pull back to the uh, back to the 140s. I don't see a problem with that. But is this a PE or is this a brand new A with a digestive phase? And then we go to B, C, and D. I have my own analysis in terms of what I'm anticipating, but I, I can't even discuss it until we break 148 and then it becomes viable at 152. Yes, you could go up, and yes, you could go down. So it's just stuck in a range. I don't see much for it right this moment. Okay, next question I had was the IYT and Boeing. IYT is down a dollar ninety-two after that peak E. Uh, this is really like a rogue wave or a right shoulder, a right arm extension failure pattern. 
but it'll only be so if at 186.76 it plunges another point and a half in the next two days. Uh, and this is uh, suggesting that that weekly chart is really important, that it is in a digestive phase, and that uh, the IYT, the transportation index, is not rallying to, toward the highs, all-time highs of 209.44. It's way down at 186. Got a lot of work to do. Looking out, that's very positive. Shorter term, it's confirms for me that I, I just have to be real careful here. Uh, a question I know, statement in the den was, um, uh, was talking to someone from Silicon Valley yesterday, big egos. Yeah, you know, you've got to separate that. The big egos is really what keeps them ticking. It's an important ingredient, absolutely. But the hubris comes when they do something like build the world's tallest building, make a big announcement about it. And this is one of the world's most efficient efficient buildings. Actually, very interesting. I actually quite like the design. Haven't seen it for real. That's where the real proof of the pudding is, not just a, a drawing or a picture. Uh, but at this particular point, I am kind of impressed. And we'll see what happens. So in fact, let me show you how impressed I am. Um, it says, OK, let me just see if I can say, do it quickly. Here we go. Uh, WeWork is opening a second headquarters in Salesforce, new $1 billion skyscraper. Did, oh, it was the other one, the other page that had it with all the benefits. Uh, it's heating self-sufficient, I believe, heating and air conditioning. It, 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 there's no, there's a charge to uh, to actually put it in place, but once it's going, I think it's almost self-sufficient. I mean, there's a lot that's fantastic. Uh, the near completion of Salesforce Tower is a cherry on top. It rises 61 stories over the city's financial district, San Francisco, making it the tallest building west of Chicago that's capable of being occupied. Anyway, it goes on and on and on. Uh, Boston Properties, I didn't realize that they were the developers. Hmm, that's interesting. So if anyone's in San Francisco, if you know anything about the building and, and you know, good news, bad news, uh, you know, I love hearing about that. To me, this is this is a great thing. i got nothing to do with uh, saying people shouldn't build buildings. I happen to love architecture. I love uh, new buildings. And um, they called it a display of optimism that San Francisco's future is bright. Fred Clark of Pelly Clark and Pelly Architects. Great deal more than simply another office building. I hope that's true. I mean, you, know, you just want the best for your cities. Okay, uh, enough with that. IYT, Boeing, what's going down again? Boeing, oh, down five at 350. That's a drag on the Dow. So um, that's not so great. Yeah, I, I just think Boeing's a real problem. When Boeing eventually starts to see things come right later in the year, there's a chance that it could have a very good rally that will really help the Dow when it needs it the most. Right now, it's the Dow's mix has got some goodies and baddies. So uh, look at Home Depot. Home Depot right now is up uh, 95 cents at all-time highs as we speak in a new leg. E, uh, this is a new leg C. Ooh, like the Dow. Okay. And leg E in the weekly chart. Very close to some kind of digestive phase, and uh, but really good action, Home Depot. All right. So a question I had about the XAL <clears throat> up 27 cents in leg B in the daily. It's above in the triangle in the weekly. Monthly is improving. Hey, I like this. This is a good sign. Uh, transports are moving very uh, transports are moving up a little bit, but the XAL, the ARCA airline index. Is doing very nicely. It's only up 27 cents at 105.94, but what a nice move it's had all the way from the low that was made just under 100 seven sessions ago. So this is a good, uh, uh, very good action. Now, I had a question. Oh, man. Oh, yes. There it is. ESR. ESR. I've never looked at ES. I don't know if I ever looked. Element Solutions, Inc. Trading down 23 cents at $10.15. And the question is, um, I've held ESI, ESI, yes, ESI for some time. It is not showing much movement. At this point, should I sell or hold at the best of days? So, you know, uh, you kind of answered your own question. These patterns, they go from an H to an M pattern, just stay in this rectangle sideways trading band forever. Now, from 10.16 to the 200-period moving average of 
is a really nice move. It's about 8%. So I wouldn't sneeze at that. Well, I would sneeze at probably, but I wouldn't sneeze at that. Um, but if it goes below $9.90, yeah, it has the thing of making lower highs and lower lows. So I'm kind of agreeing with you. I'm just going to say I don't see anything at right now. It's one of those stocks that if it suddenly moves, probably you, you kind of have to be in to appreciate where it's going. But at this point, if you, uh, you know, I'm not going to make it. Give me a second to think it through because you are already in it. So that's different. I'll be back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So we're looking at ESI, ESI's Element Solutions, trading down 21 cents. I'm pleased I had a chance to go through this because the Chapman Wave methodology looks for at least a D, and we got that when it had the rally in the, around about the 24th of uh, January. January. And it went from the uh, nine area, just uh, yeah, about just in the nines, low nines, and then it ran up to peak C at about eleven, and then just under eleven, then pulled back sharply to under ten, and then it had a sudden up spike that failed at a peak D. Well, it says to me in the Chapman Wave methodology, stocks that tend to make Ds can do them quite often, and then they might even go to E or an F. But it's good that they make at least a D because it shows a character character. Uh, um, integrity that goes to a buy from a buy signal to a buy mode to at least a D. All right, that's the same thing. Back in um, late March, pulls back to the 940s, and then all of a sudden it goes peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, pulls back, but the MACD still holds well. Stochastic pulls back very sharply, and then it has one more spike to an E, 
pulls back a little bit above the 200 period moving average and then goes to an F. And that's that pattern that I call the, that double camel hump uh, where you've got a pullback and then there's just one sudden spike to the upside with two peaks and then it's all over. And then it is all over because it goes from the high that was made at a doji candle, 3rd of May, high of 11.44. Trough A, trough B, trough C, trough D. Yeah, trough D, doji candle. And then has a really nice move from the 9.46. 9.39 area and rallies up to uh, 10.83. I'm pleased I saw this because now you've got your arch going to the second arch, which is what I was going to tell you about. But I'm going to say something a little different. Uh, Tim, if you're holding this and you're holding it and you're underwater, you didn't say, but you said you've held it for a while. So if you're underwater, what is it? Sometime. Sometime means sometime. Sometimes also means that I'm kind of in a losing position. Not much, but it's coming back. And what do I do? This is what I'm guessing. So I'm going to say to you, if you got it much, oh, we're over. If you got it earlier, then put your stop in at just under 10, at 9.99. But if you're, if you, if you've got in and you've got a real, if you've got a nice profit, make your stop 9.99 for now on the, on some part of it. Otherwise, I would say get out of it right now. We can always get back in. It should make another little arch formation. I'll be back.